Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Saturday. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. It is rainy and dreary here in Northern California, so I am doing a bunch of reading. So that is fantastic and it's supposed to rain all weekend. So I hope that I can actually get a lot of reading in, which is my plan. I am here today to do my February book haul. This is going to be all of the books that were sent to me over the last 30 days from different publishers. Um, and I have to tell you guys, this is quite a stack. It's big and it's full of amazing titles. So I probably should get started or this video is going to take forever. Um, so as I always say, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads. However, these books will wind up on your TBR. Um, pre-order them from your local independent bookstores. Have your library pre-order them for you. However, you get your books because um, I have a feeling a lot of these you are going to want to read. So let's get started with the one that I've read already, and I'm not going to go into too much detail because it will be in one of my read and reviewed videos very soon. And that is The Other Americans by Layla Lalami. This is out in March from Pantheon Books. Thank you, Pantheon Books, for sending me this early copy. Um, just as a sort of note, this is what the cover is going to look like. So if you're looking for it on the shelf, don't look for this black cover like I have. It's going to have that fantastic red cover. Um, this is the story of a family that lives in the Mojave Desert where the patriarch is killed at the very beginning in a hit and run car accident, which brings his youngest daughter Nora home from the Bay Area. Told in multiple perspectives, including from all of the members of the family, Nora's mother and older sister, and also her father, who tells us a little bit about where he was prior to his death. Also, we have a young man that Nora went to school with who has returned from the Iraq War and what he is dealing with psychologically after that event and sort of their intimacy that they develop. Um, we get points of view from the an, uh, investigating officer and all different people in the community. I honestly thought this book was freaking fantastic. If you like a story with multiple different narrators that are going to bring it all together for you, this book will be for you. She was shortlisted for the Pulitzer for her book, um, The Moore's Account, and um, I have not read that, and I am going to be getting it soon because this book was so amazing. So that's The Other Americans by Leila Lalami, and this is out from Pantheon Books in March of this year, which is really just around the corner, let's be honest. Uh, the second book I'm actually currently um, about 75 pages into, and that is Fire Logic by Lori J. Marks. This is actually already out. It was released in January from Small Beer Press. Small Beer Press is an independent publisher ran by Kelly Link, who is a phenomenal uh, author in her own right, um, and her husband. And they are reissuing this quartet of novels. It's a fantasy series by Lori J. Marks. Um, and this is what the first one looks like. Isn't it great? Um, fantasy novels are a little bit hard to explain, but let's just say this is set in a world where there are four different elemental types of magic, fire, water, air, and earth. Our main character sort of in this one is a young woman who is sort of like the speaker or the person who goes out for her town into the world to negotiate the peace that keeps her town safe. But at the very beginning of the book, there's sort of a hostile takeover of the country after the leader um, of the whole entire continent has passed away and everything is thrown asunder. Um, our main character suffers from a number of <laughs> tragedies, um, but then she sort of becomes part of a group that are out to sort of save their country. You know, that sort of fan fantasy idea. Um, it is really good. There's also a lot of gender and sexual fluidity fluidity in these books. Um, it is it is awesome. I, you know how I struggle, you guys, in fantasy books that take too long in world building or it's too complicated and I just get lost. This book has a very interesting, unique world, but it's built in such a way that you definitely can dive in. I know Fire Logic is out now. I know the rest of them are coming out this year. Please support your small independent presses. Thank you very much to Small Beer Press for sending me Fire Logic by Laura J. Marks. I am invested and I have a feeling I'll want to read the whole series. The next book that is up on this list is also already out. I think it came out this month. And that is The Lost Girls of Paris by Pam Genoff. Now, Pam Genoff doesn't really need any introduction. Her book, The Orphan's Tale, was 
everywhere when it came out. But this book sounds fantastic. So for all of you guys, I think Leo, this might be up your alley or anyone who likes historical fiction. This starts in 1946, 1946 Manhattan, wanted to make sure I got the year right there, where our main character finds an empty suitcase in Grand Central Station. When she takes the suitcase home, because curiosity always kills the cat, um, uh, she finds out that it belongs to a woman in, that was a leader of a cell of women who were secret agents during the war out of London. And in the suitcase, there are 12 photos of the 12 women that were part of this secret agent group. I don't think that you need much more than that to want to read this novel. I think that sounds absolutely fantastic. Historical fiction in the right way, handled by the right person, is just a beauty to read. So I want to thank Park Row Books for sending me this, The Lost Girls of Paris by Pam Genoff. A little itch on my eye. Hold on. Okay. I feel like I have to talk fast because this pile is so big. So I apologize if I rush a little bit. I want to thank Grey Wolf Press for sending me two novels by Katherine Davis. They are reissuing her first novel, Labrador, which is the story of two sisters. Isn't this cover great, by the way? This is the story of two sisters, Kitty, who, and Willie. Willie is the eldest and Kitty is the youngest. And Kitty is the one who is visited by an angel who reshapes her beliefs by telling her stories and fables and par parables um, that sort of um, re-evaluate re how she looks and views the world. And it says here, as Kitty escapes the orbit of her sister and becomes to terms with its, the demons and the enchantments that have been her birthright from the start, the world she's in starts to change. So one, take a moment, that cover is fantastic. I think that sounds really good. Now, this book is a new book by Catherine Davis that just came out, and this is The Silk Road. This is the finished copy. They had sent me um, a copy of the um, arc of this as well, so I have both, and the cover is phenomenal. So thank you, Grey Wolf, for that. This takes place in, in um, a labyrinth in somewhere in the icy north, and you're in a yoga class, and one of the characters doesn't get up from corpse pose, I think that's very clever. And um, what happens is we sort of are introduced to all of the characters. They are titled by their occupation within this uh, labyrinth that they live in. And they start to reevaluate who they are, how they got where they were, and all of the sort of intricacies of that. I'm trying really hard to stay away from knowing too much because I think this is going to be a book where the uh, twists and turns make it real excuse me, really enjoyable to read. And I am so thankful to Grey Wolf Press for both of these copies. So there's Labrador by Katherine Davis, the story of two young sisters, and also The Silk Road, the story of a bunch of people locked in a labyrinth in the icy north. Can't sound different, but both sound amazing. Katherine Davis, Grey Wolf, Pre Grey Wolf Press. Okay. The next book, actually, I was just talking about with my friend Anne um, when we were talking about books we were excited about. And this comes out this year from Knopf, actually this month, of course it comes out this year, and that is Lost Children Archive by Valerie Lucilli, and I'm saying that wrong, I know. Um, and this was actually, she wrote a novel a few years ago called The Story of My Teeth, which I read, which was absolutely crazy and weird and thought-provoking and fantastic. So if you haven't read Story of My Teeth and you can't wait to read The Lost Children Archive, highly recommend that you do this. Now, this is a story of a, um, a family. It's two parents and their children that are traveling from the East Coast to Arizona, I believe. The father is a documentary, um, make, documentary -er, um, a documentary maker, and the mother does some sort of um, radio broadcast. And she becomes fascinated with the idea of these children that are being held at the border uh, and trying to cross into America, but they wind up being detained and sent back, and no one knows really what happens to them, if that doesn't sound timely. Um, and also what's going on is that there is clearly tension within this family group, and the children are aware of the tension between their parents as they travel across the United States. I have heard nothing but fantastic stuff about this. Um, and I think this comes out actually on February 19th, so it's not that far away. And that is The Lost, Ch I'm sorry, there's no The, Lost Children Archive by Valerie, Valeria Lucila. And um, yeah, I'm super excited for this one. Okay, 
Um, the next two books were sent to me by the publisher Zenka Books, and I want to say thank you very, very much because I'm super excited about both of these. Um, but this was the one I requested, and that is The Archive of Alternate Endings by Lindsay Drager. Now, I read Lindsay Drager's last novel, The Lost Daughter Collective, and was blown away by how just plain, crazy, amazing it was. Still don't know if I completely understand it, but I still think about it. I loved the cover, I loved the book, I loved the prose, I loved the story. Um, and so I'm super excited that she has a new book coming out and this one comes out in May, so it's a little bit far away. But one, this is a book that I have to read the back to you a little bit because it's complicated. This is um, a book that says, tracking the evolution of Hansel and Gretel at 75 year intervals that correspond with the Earth's visits by Halley's Comet the Archive of Alternate Endings explores how stories are disseminated and shared, edited and censored, voiced and left untold. In 1950, I'm sorry, in 1456, Jonas Gutenberg's sister uses the tale as a surrogate for sharing a family secret only her brother believes. In 1835, the brothers Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm revise the tale to bury a truth about Jacob even he can't come to face. In 1986, a folklore scholar and her brother come to find the record is wrong about the figurative witch in the woods, while in 2211, time-space probes aiming to find Earth's sister planet disseminate the narrative in binary code. Breadcrumbs tracking uh, back in time from 2365 to 1378, siblings reimagine, reinvent, and recycle the narrative of Hansel and Gretel to articulate personal, regional, and ultimately cosmic experiences of tragedy. I don't know. I am fascinated by everything I just read to you. I hope you guys pick this up. Thank you so much to Zinka Books for sending it to me. Again, out in May 2019. If that sounds so good and you guys can't wait, please pick up The Lost Daughter Collective, also by Lindsay Drager. It is uh, amazing. My nose is really itching me today. The editor also sent me a book that she was super excited about, and that is Horse Latitudes by Morris Collins. This is um, the story of a man whose marriage has just, you know, gone kaputz. And so he decides to travel to Central America. And really, he's on the brink of either destroying himself or redeeming himself. How does that sound? Um, and he gets, makes a lot of poor choices. And he winds up being indebted to a woman named Yolanda. Now, Yolanda's sister is in somewhere in Central America, deep in the country's interior, waiting for a man named Soto. Soto is actually a slave trafficker, but presents himself as a migrant um, guide. And this plunges Ethan into the story of Yolanda's sister, and also a bunch of stuff, as you guys can imagine, goes horribly wrong and horribly right, I'm sure. This is Horse Latitude by Morris Collins, and super excited. Thank you very much uh, for sending this to me. Zenka Books, I appreciate both of these. Okay, I got to start talking faster. Uh, the next book is The Editor by Stephen Rowley. This is coming out from Putnam Books in April 2nd, 2019. Now, Stephen Rowley is really well known for Lily and the Octopus that came out a while ago um, and was just ravely reviewed about. Um, this book speaks to me. I really love books about books. You guys know how that is. This is set in 1990s New York. We have a young writer who's trying to publish his first novel and it gets picked up thankfully. And the editor at the, the publishing house is none other than Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. I wanted to know if they put her middle, uh, her prior name in there if it was just Jackie Onassis. Uh, Jackie is fascinated with this semi-autobiographical tale that um, this bo uh, young character is writing. However, he sort of hits a bump as he's finishing the story, worried about um, sort of the secrets it's going to divulge about his family. And what it says, the last line of this blurb is amazing. It says, but when the book's forthcoming publication threatens to unravel already fragile relationships, both within his family and with his partner, James finds that he can't bring himself to finish the manuscript. But when the long-held family secret is revealed, he realizes his editor may have more up her sleeve and a larger plan that goes beyond the page. One, I love that Jackie Onassis is a character in this book. I love the idea that it's about a book about to be published and everything about that. So this is The Editor by Stephen Rowley. Thank you very much, Putnam Books, for this early copy. It comes out April 2nd, 2019. I think you guys are going to want that one. The next book on this list 
is the uh, Allison uh, Richmond's The Secret of Clouds. It comes out on February 19th, 2019, right around the corner. Um, and I think Allison actually is an author a lot of people are familiar with. I hadn't heard about her until I read about this book, I want to say in Publisher Weekly. I mean, I think that's where I read about it. Um, and the blurb on the back does very little to explain it, but this is how I'm going to explain it. This book takes place in two different countries, um, in two different cities, Kiev and here in the United States. And also, I, and I just realized I said a city and a country, that made a lot of sense. But this is the story of a young boy and his effect both on his mother and a woman who's brought in to teach him because he suffers from an illness that means he can't really go out in the world. This is a book about that sort of dynamic and everything about that sounds really amazing. So this is Allison Richmond, The Secret of Clouds, on sale February 19th, 2019. I wanna thank Berkeley Books very much for this early edition. I have so many great books to read, guys. Can you guys tell? I read and read and read and there are just so many out there. I will get to them all, I promise. Uh, the next book that I'm gonna tell you about is The Glove Maker by Anne Weisgarber. This was sent to me by um, Skyhorse Publishing, and I want to say thank you very much. And I think this comes out in February as well. There is another cover of this. I want to say it's the UK cover that is freaking gorgeous. This is, takes place in 1888 Utah, um, where our main character, a Mormon woman, lives by herself in a house in a rural part of Utah when a man arrives who is clearly on the run from something. And she has to make a decision because she knows that the law is going to be following this man and she doesn't want it to affect or any, uh, you know, bring harm to her family. So she has to make a decision between helping this man and saying no and protecting her family and what sort of decision to make. Her husband is not home at the time, um, so it's really up to her to protect her family. Um, uh, Leo read this book and reviewed raved about it on Twitter and Instagram recently. So um, I don't think Leo has his own channel. I just think he is a um, very avid watcher. Um, he comments on a lot of my videos and I really appreciate it. I want to believe he's from the Netherlands um, and he is he reads astronomically fast. So this is The Glove Maker by Anne Weisgarber and it is out in February. Thank you very much, Skyhorse Publishing. Okay, two books left. Um, I did this book in when I opened my mail and I just destroyed it when I was trying to read the back and give you guys the sort of synopsis. So I wanted to give it another go. And that's The Dragonfly Sea by Yvonne Arihambo Awur. I'm going to hold that up because I don't know how to say her last name. This is also from Kanaf, I want to say. Yes. And this comes out March 2019. Now this is one heavy book, so it's going to be a heavy hardback. And I'm going to read the back to you again because it is a, a bit of a convoluted story that I don't want to mess up. On the island of um, Pate, off the coast of Kenya, live solitary, stubborn Ayana and her mother, Munora. When a sailor named Mohindin, also an outsider, enters their lives, Ahana finds something she has never had before, a father. But as Ayana grows into adulthood, forces of nature and history begin to reshape her life and the island itself. From a taciturn visitor who has a murky past to a sanctuary-seeking religious extremist, from dragonflies to a tsunami, from black-clad kidnappers to cultural emissaries from China, Ayana ends up embarking on a dramatic shimp's journey to the Far East where she will discover friends and enemies, be seduced by the charming but unreliable scion of a powerful Turkish business family, and reclaim her devotion to the sea and come to find her own tenuous place uh, amid a landscape of beauty and violence. One, I think that cover is phenomenal. I think that book sounds amazing. This is again on sale for March. Thank you, Kanaf, for sending me this copy. Oh my gosh. The Dragon Fly Sea by Yvonne Arihambo Awara. I'm saying that wrong, but yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, super excited about this one. Last but not least in this very long video is The Confessions of Franny Langston by Sarah Collins. I'm obsessed with Sarah Collins. Her style is amazing, and this book sounds fantastic. This is really what it is. Franny Collins is on trial in London. London, let's make sure I'm right there. In London for the murder of her employer, who is a scientist and his sort of eccentric French wife. But she cannot remember what happened, and she's on trial. There's a lot of people who are coming forward, uh, sort of pleading her guilt. But we also get her story. Um, what it says here is she can't recall, but now she has come, 
or how she has been covered in the victim's blood, but she does have a tale to tell. The story of her child on a Jamaican plantation, her apprenticeship under a debauched scientist who stretched all bounds of ethics, and the events that brought her into the, um, her employer's London home and into a passionate and forbidden relationship. I think this cover is gorgeous. Um, and the arc came with this sort of newspaper clipping, which is just such great publicity for this book. Oh my gosh. And it tells you like the marketing campaign. It is so absolutely cool and about the author. And I love this arc and I think this book sounds amazing. Um, so this is out in May of 2019. And thank you to Harper for sending me The Confessions of Franny Langston by Sarah Collins. I, I can't wait. This book probably will not wait. I try to wait on these books until closer to their publication date, but sometimes I just cannot. So this was one stack of books. Let me show you guys if I can lift it. Oh my goodness. I hope you guys are super excited about these titles. As I always say, if you are a return subscriber to my channel, thank you so much. I could have done it. I cannot do this without you. If you are new to my channel, I hope all of these books sound exciting to you and you stick around for another video. As always, happy reading and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.